There we go. Hey guys, I'm George. Let's start over. Uh, this is the Corsair 2020 holiday guide uh, stream. We're going to go over all the cool stuff we got going on for the holidays, answer some questions, and talk about cyberpunk because, hey, you know what? We can do what we want. It's our stream. Uh, Kevin, why don't you introduce who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm a product manager at Corsair, and today I will help guide you through the guide. And see, I said that before and you couldn't hear me, and I said it again. On just, purpose this time, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. On purpose. <laughs> Just so you can be there for my mistake, yeah. yeah. And Vanessa. Hi, I'm Vanessa. I'm the community marketing manager here at Elgato, and I'll be talking about our Elgato products. And we have a special guest today, Soren from Twitch. Hey, Soren, why don't you explain kind of who you are for the people who aren't familiar with you? Hi, my name is Soren. I broadcast as a partner on Twitch, and I basically break almost everything I touch. So, well, then you're like Twitch's version of Linus. Then, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, um, and Linus, if you see that, I meant it. Um, so let's talk real quick. So before we start too much, I wanted to talk a little bit about Cyberpunk because it's super, super cool. I've been playing it a lot and I want to talk about it. And I am sitting at home with my kids and I can't really talk about it with them because it is a very adult themed game. So real quick, who here has not played Cyberpunk? Have you guys all played? played. All right. Yes. All right. So what are your first thoughts, Kevin? Uh, I really love the idea and premise of the cyberpunk game um, and kind of just the whole universe uh, behind it. Uh, and, you know, bugs aside, I, I really enjoy the game. Um, there was one that I encountered that, you know, made me start over. But other than that, I think the story is really cool. Um, I'm still playing on an older gen graphics card, so I'm not getting the full experience. But um, uh, I have 3070 coming in. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Nice. And Soren, what do you think? You've been playing it a little bit? It, it's it's fun. Uh, so I run a family-friendly broadcast. So as soon as we started up, I was like, okay, cool. There's a nudity sensor. Turn that on. Yay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. The entire sentence he just said is not okay. Yeah. <laughs> like if you turned okay. the profanity and a nudity sensor on, the There's game would be... Make... There is no profanity filter. Yeah. Which yeah. If there was a profanity <laughs> filter, the game would be like, I went to the <laughs> store. <laughs> <laughs> the entire plot. Yeah. Vanessa, what's I really your thoughts? Want games actually try to embrace and have like an alternate voice line. Obviously, that's more funding required, but like right. I think Gears of War did it where your mother wears a dress. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah, so that's, like, that's, I mean, right. that's that's kind of okay though, too. Like, that, I would hope yeah. so. Like, someone, if someone wants to wear a dress, that's cool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I personally, I love it. I yeah. already finished my first playthrough. I'm going through a second playthrough. Really? Mm -hmm. I have you a finished, lot of did you roll Nomad or, or what did you uh, roll? I went Street Kid first. Yeah, yeah. Street Kid. Now, now I'm rolling uh, Corporate and seeing the difference in, in uh, dialogue. But so far, I mean, I, I really liked it. I already yeah. have 55 hours in it, so. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Cyberpunk. So I wanted to share uh, real quick the requirements because this is something that is ridiculous that a lot of people don't realize. So if we can bring up the requirements screen um, on the on the chat here. This is from CD Projekt Red. This is what they say the minimum requirements are for this game. And they are not joking. This game soaks up hardware, you guys. If you guys yeah. have been playing it on, even on these, these are like their system requirements. Um, this is like bare, bare minimum recommendation on this. They're not joking about that. So if you want to turn on uh, RTX or ray tracing, um, you really better have a card similar to this. I'm running uh, on ray tracing on a uh, um, 1440p screen, and I have a, a 2080 Ti. And uh, uh, it is like, you know, scraping to 60 frames a second. Uh, it's, it's barely over that. Um, That's not where I am. So I'm, I'm yeah. running a 1080 Ti um, on a 49-inch um, wide monitor. So it's a 3840 by 1080. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm, I'm barely able to maintain like 65 FPS. And I think I'm on like low medium right yeah. now. Um, I, I, it's just right out of the box. You know, I haven't adjusted anything. So maybe it's trying to do ray tracing on the 1080 Ti, which is possible, but it's not great, right? So Yeah, it's. I mean, don't get me wrong. The game is, I think the game looks fantastic. And uh, I really like the world building. Like when, as soon as you jump into it, you're like, I'm just a person in this world. It, it, I'm not like the main hero. Like too many RPGs have that thing where like, you know, there's this nightmare tragedy and you're the only one that can save us. And this is just like, nah, you're just some schmo that like showed up and, you know. <laughs> If you happen to save the world, that's cool. Otherwise, just you know, go ahead and go to under your unboxing rings for the next two days, and that's it. You know, so I kind of like it. I don't know. Um, what are you rolling this, uh, playing this on, Soren? Uh, I've been playing it as Corpo, but I was hoping to play it more like a kind of Deus Ex, where you can go in, do this espionage, just cloak and dagger. Um, it's not that great. 
if you want to do super stealth with the AIs, like, all right, he's behind me. He's cr- hey, you're right there. Just yeah. Immediately catch on, and everyone looks at you immediately. So it's like, oh, yeah. I was. Okay. Off, I and, thought it was stealth. In one of those missions bad. last night, in one of those missions, the same thing happened to me, where I was like, oh, I I alerted that guard in that hallway, but I should. The ones upstairs don't know. They're they don't know. Yeah. No, it's like that guard in the hallway downstairs, and like four blocks away, sees you. Every guard in the area knows. Like. Now, I guess it might make sense that they're all like hooked up via Wi-Fi, and all that, you know. So, I, yeah. I mean, there's a, probably an in-world explanation to it, but I'm used to like kind of the the you know, I guess the, the Tolkien rip-off universe Middle Ages stuff, where if you like knocked a guard, and even if the guard saw you and you killed him and buried him in the weeds, like the guard two blocks down, he has no idea. Like he's just like yeah. Out. There's been points where I was like, I was close, or I was going in, crouched, not seen at all, didn't engage with anybody, and all of a sudden, body detected, everyone notified. <laughs> yeah. Who? Wait. What? <laughs> yeah. Who else? Yeah. left like you know three blocks back. <laughs> <laughs> this is this game is the best example of the like save frequently uh, kind of trope that that all kind of RPGs should have. Like you should be saving your game very, very frequently. Work. Yeah, exactly. Where you can find a spot to save, right? Right. Well, well, change. You save. That's you my least favorite thing. Game. That's my change. least favorite thing. When it, you you can't save right now, like don't tell me what I can and can't do. This is my computer. <laughs> But even if you manage to save, if you load back in, it can change the world state. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I, if you if you use the vending machines right now and it says sold out, save, reload, the vending machine will be back in stock. Oh, perfect. I yeah, wish actually, it was for the world right now. I mean, if you could just yeah. go to sleep and come back and everything was in stock. Yeah. yeah. It's, which we will be talking about today. Actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for the natural segue, Kevin. Um, <laughs> But uh, one of the things I, I kind of want to talk about, Soren, you built a PC recently on stream, right? I was watching your stream the other day. Um, what did you build? What's your hardware that you put uh, together? We recently built a, it was a nine hour build, unfortunately, but it was a 3090 RTX card with a 10850 i9 Intel card. Not bad. 32 gigs of RAM. Really, really nice and smooth <laughs> playing Cyberpunk. Yeah, I'm sure the 3090 <laughs> does a little bit of all right there. Yeah, but uh, in my case, I do a lot of development. So it's like games and also kind of production development to do. So nice little overhead to have 24 <laughs> gigabyte of RAM inside. A little, the bit, of little bit of overhead, the 3090. <laughs> You're running it on like a 1080p monitor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have, I, I actually just recently moved back home from Finland. So I, I'm using monitors that were here already. Hmm. Uh, Wait, is Finland real? <laughs> it's right next to Narnia. From yeah, what my friends told me. So I, <laughs> I live next to Narnia, apparently. Because I got a I got a guy that works on my team from from Denmark, and he was telling me that Finland mathematically may be a rounding error. Uh, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, the population's like five million, so it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like because the, the 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 accuracy of estimate of populations is greater. The plus or minus accuracy is greater than the population of Finland, so it may not actually exist. You know. From the lodge arts, but I do know people who have claimed to have been there before, so we'll see. Um, good. You should go when you can. Yeah, I've uh, my actually my brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my brother went to Finland for hockey once, and he said it was really really cool. Uh, so I've I've always kind of wanted to go there. It's on my list of places to go to, but I have to go to Sweden and Finland and Norway as well. So yeah, Scandinavia. Cool. That's that's the place to be. I think. Yeah, don't eat. Uh, I have been to to Scandinavia before, and they made me eat a whale steak. Uh, well, they didn't make me. They told me it was. A, <laughs> they told me it was a local delicacy. You should try whale steak. It's great. And then I did, and it wasn't. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to Norway again. They're strange. <laughs> They held spears to you. Eat the steak now. No, it was more just like, oh no, you should try it. It's a. How often are you going to be in Sandefjord? And I was like, well, you know, I try it. And then everyone else ordered chicken, and I was like, wait a minute, you guys. <laughs> I thought it was delicacy. But anyway, I digress. Um, before we go off Cyberpunk, one more. I wanted to show off one cool thing. Um, we had a mod built for Cyberpunk. Our buddy Ron Lee Christensen did a cool uh, case mod for it with the GeForce Garage guys and CD Projekt Red. Uh, I have some cool photos here that I kind of want to show off. So if uh, you guys can show. So this is his Facebook, Ron Lee Christensen stuff. Um, he did this amazing uh, case mod. Um, you can see even like hand painted every little bit of it. Um, super, super detailed. Has even, you know, kind of the, the billboards and stuff. Um, digital lighting to match it. Super cool mod. I was really impressed with it. He, uh, he really knocked it out of the park on this stuff. And it, um, it, it captures the essence of cyberpunk so well. I mean, it, it right. looks almost like it just came out of the game right right and even internally like the inside of it this is all hydro x all corsair components all hydro x components all of them custom painted 
Um, even the SSD is painted and, you know, the motherboard is painted to match. Um, the, the level of detail and the attention to detail here is phenomenal. So, um, you know, if you're into cyberpunk and you kind of want to, uh, to, to get a bunch of cash and throw it at, at somebody to, to mod you a PC, this is what it could be one day. I highly recommend it. Um, you guys will see more of that on the GeForce Garage page on NVIDIA's website. It looks so good. Um, but uh, yeah, he did uh, even the, the, the in-game references like Play It Again Liz and stuff. Super cool. I was really impressed with it. Um, okay, so let's talk about why we're actually here. So we can go back to the, uh, there we go. So we can go back and we can talk about it. So we have a bunch of cool stuff that is on sale and for sale and, and you know, special deals going on this year. Um, and not to be like too kind of QVC infomercially, but I wanted to go over kind of, people ask us all the time, like, hey, I'm trying to find your guys' power supplies or I'm trying to find your guys' coolers or I'm trying to find your guys' microphones or key lights or whatever, and I can't find them in stock anywhere. Um, we happen to have a bunch of that stuff in stock and on the website right now. So I'm going to go over kind of what it is and what it and what we have. And we also answer questions for you guys. So if you have questions, dump them in the chat and we'll take a look at them and try and answer them during the stream. Vanessa will be our Elgato expert. Kevin will be our technical expert. Kevin is a legitimate uh, actual engineer uh, who went to real engineering school and knows math and everything. So, yeah, right. and, and then Soren is here because uh, someone has to be entertaining and Soren is good at that. So. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Oops. All right. So, um, uh, someone asked, are future product questions allowed? You can ask them. We won't answer them. Um, <laughs> yes, they are I mean, allowed. We yeah. are not allowed to answer. <laughs> we can, you know, if it's a question like, hey, uh, are you planning to make a product like this and we have actually already released it? Then I'll tell you then, yes, we've already released that product. But if it's a product like, hey, are you planning to make a product like this and we're not announcing it till tomorrow? I'm going to be like, I, we can't talk about unannounced products. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So for the holiday guide here, um, I, I kind of want to just say that we'll probably give like high level overviews for the products. We won't go like super into the weeds and tell you why we engineered it a certain way um, or why, it, you know, this is better than that. But we just want to give you some key points and aspects of these products just so you can make more informed decisions. So when you decide you want to upgrade or if you want to buy gifts for somebody, um, you can uh, go uh, with more education and more information um, to make that purchase. Cool. All right. So first things first, uh, let's start off with uh, keyboards on the holiday gift guide. So we should talk a little bit about one of my favorite little keyboards. Uh, we just announced two big keyboards, but before we talk about the new ones that we just announced, the one on the gift guide is the K57 RGB wireless. Um, and this is a keyboard that a lot of people don't even know we have. Uh, and I think it's actually a really, really good keyboard and doesn't get enough credit. Um, it is wireless. It is RGB. It has Capel LEDs and Slipstream wireless tech. It is chock full of technology and it's in stock right now. It's pretty cool. Kevin, yeah. tell so, people what Slipstream is. Uh, Slipstream is basically our new wireless protocol that helps you essentially get wired performance wirelessly. Um, so you're looking at sub millisecond response time and that basically can give you an edge during games. Um, a lot of people, when they think about wireless keyboards, they're like, oh, well, there'll be some lag between you know my input and what the computer actually registers. Uh, but with Slipstream, um, you can avoid that. So um, you can play wirelessly, um, you know, if you wanna play back like on your lap or something or play on the couch, um, you can do that. Now, it's really nice. Um, also Slipstream Wireless helps you uh, conserve um, some battery life in terms of high performance use. Um, but the K57 specifically, um, you can use it for, on Slipstream Wireless, Bluetooth, um, or you can have it wired through USB. So there's many different connectivity options um, that make it a really versatile choice. Um, and like George said, it has a lot of RGB. And with that RGB, we're using our Capellix LEDs, which are themselves energy saving. Um, so between Slipstream and the Capellix, you're going to look uh, at some really uh, long durations of game time with that RGB lighting on, and even more uh, if you decide lighting's not your thing. So one of you guys might see Capellix on this, you might see Capellix on our coolers, you might see Capellix on Dominator Platinum RGB memory. Capellix is what we call the technology for these micro LEDs that don't have um, the separate uh, the shell housing and the casing that normal LEDs do. So they're like little tiny surface mount. They take up much, much less space. They use much, much less power. And because they don't have the, the cover on them, um, they actually produce more light for less wattage. So they produce less heat as well and take less power to, to get the same lighting effect. So they're really, really good for things like battery life, like on a wireless keyboard. They're really, really good for something small form factor like a memory module where that really thin top profile lets you stack a bunch of LEDs there or uh, something like the top of a uh, Elite Capellix cooler, uh, which has the Capellix LEDs as like 33 Capellix LEDs on a little tiny kind of one inch by one inch spot or two inch by two inch spot. 
So it's it's really cool to to use that technology and kind of put it throughout stuff. So you'll see Capellic showing up on more and more products um, as we go forward. But that's one of my favorite things uh, that we've got going on. Yeah. Um, in the chat, I see actually see uh, somebody talking about the membrane um, for K57. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so a lot of people will go for K57 or K55 if they want a very quiet keyboard to use. I and mean, I know with all the work from home and everything that's happening right now, having a quiet keyboard, especially during meetings, is paramount. You know, you don't want to be clacking away sometimes on your mechanical keyboard. Um, even myself, I use a K83 sometimes, which is um, just a scissor switch. It's our other wireless keyboard. Um, I use that one for really quick, uh, quiet typing during meetings and stuff. Cool. And just so you guys, yeah, K57 is a membrane keyboard. That is true. Um, real quick, Vanessa, what keyboard are you using right now? I'm using the K95. Yeah. Platinum XT. Oh. K95 Platinum XT, which is the, the predecessor to our, our brand new K100, which just came out. Soren, which keyboard did you end up going with? I actually used two. Uh, one from my game rig, which is the K100. And the stream rig has the K63. Oh, cool. What do you think? What do you think about the K100 right now? It's good. Uh, I haven't had a chance to try out the OPX switches, which are the, the kind of new ones with this set. I have the speed switches, but overall, it, it's it matches out to what I had with the K95, but also has the kind of spin wheel. Yeah, the dial. Mm. Yeah, the K100 has like. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Soren. The K100 is optional. You can get either the Cherry MX switches, which you know you can get speed or, or other switches, um, but we also have the OPX, the optical switches. So you can choose between the kind of you know optical uh, speed uh, switches or the uh, the, the standard Cherry X mechanical. So it it gives you some flexibility there, and the big jog dial on top is pretty handy. But actually, one of the the other sleeper keyboards that I like that uh, that people aren't really talking about as much. They may not know about as much as the K60 family because it's oh, a ten, yeah. we have a 10 keyless version. We have, I mean, we have cool stuff there. <clears throat> yeah, so that's a good point. The K60, which just released, um, it's a nice minimalistic style uh, with aluminum top plate. Um, uses actually new cherry switches called the viola switches, which them so, uh, they themselves are also a much quieter than the standard uh, cherry MX switch. Um, the K60, it's uh, it's at almost like the perfect price point too. I mean, so like the SE version, uh, which actually comes with PBT double shot keycaps, uh, which are good for wear resistance. Um, I think that one's what, sitting around ninety dollars uh, MSRP or so. Yeah, pretty good keyboard. I like it yeah. a lot. Um, I saw that someone asked the question in uh, the thing. Can you talk about the keyboard attachment thing you sell? IQ Nexus is what I imagine they're talking about. Um, IQ Nexus is a little tiny uh, LCD thing that goes and you can clip it onto the top of your K70 or K100 um, or even K95, I believe. It snaps onto the back and it lets you kind of set up a little touch screen, um, uh, kind of like a, a IQ interface. So you can do anything you can do in the IQ software you can do with a touch screen there. So it's a pretty cool little device to check it out on the website, IQ Nexus. Uh, all right, let's go through the rest of the gift guide real quick just so people can see what else we have. Mm -hmm. um, headsets, Virtuoso, what I am wearing right now. Uh, and I'm modeling fancily. You can see the Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE. Uh, really, really nice headset. Comes in different colors. Um, Pearl and Espresso are the new colorways, obviously. But um, it is Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, not Bluetooth. It's Wi-Fi or uh, uh, the, the standard, I'm uh, sorry, the RF. I'm not even knowing what I'm talking about right now. It is RF wireless and uh, wired as well. So you can plug it into a wire like this one. Uh, and it also has the uh, the cool omnidirectional mic that is detachable. So I'm not using the mic that is on my Virtuoso. I'm using a wave mic, which Vanessa will talk about in a second. But uh, it does have a detachable, uh, really good broadcast quality mic that Kevin is using right now. In fact, yes, I am using that one. How, so, how do I sound? How do I sound? Do I sound OK? Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> mic sounds great. You sound terrible. Oh. <laughs> it's OK. I cry every time. Yeah, sorry. And uh, I think, are you wearing a Virtuoso as well, Vanessa? I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. wearing the uh, Pearl version. Nice. Super fancy. Yeah. So highly recommend check it out. That's on the gift guide as well. Um, and then my other thing that we want to talk about headset-wise is pretty cool. Um, our first Xbox wireless headset came out. Yeah, so this one's actually a pretty big deal. Um, I remember back when I was playing Xbox 360, you know, I, I was looking for that wireless headset that didn't have any kind of tethers. I didn't need adapters or anything. And I, you know, Xbox 360 had that little, you know, ear thing. You look like a call center clerk or something. Um, and so I wasn't really feeling that. And I ended up buying like some $300 headset that I used for six months before the Xbox One came out. But now Corsair has the HS75XB 
um, which you don't need any kind of adapter or anything uh, to use with Xbox wirelessly. And this one works with Xbox uh, Series S, Series X, um, Xbox One, X, and S. Um, and you can even use it with your PC so long as you buy the uh, Microsoft wireless headset adapter. So this one is actually really great um, for those looking for a fully wireless solution where you don't need to tether to your controller. Yeah. Uh, OK. Let's see what we got going on here. Um, we also have, by the way, in case you haven't picked up on it and you're not paying attention to the chat, you should be paying attention to the chat because you can get free stuff. So you can win some of this cool stuff in the chat right now. Um, and our chat moderators are going to be giving away free swag to anybody who answers their questions or that they just like the name of uh, or you know whatever. They get to make that determination. I'm not going to ask trivia questions like last time. Maybe the chat guys and the moderators will do it. But uh, the questions I asked last time were considered too difficult. And I was told that uh, it was being unfair to people. So. There's that. Um, okay. Well, nobody, no, I mean, you were asking. You were probably asking Star Trek trivia, right? I mean, uh, it's a lot of Star Trek trivia. Yeah, there's a lot of oh. you know. What, what was the 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 San Francisco riots in Deep Space Nine? <laughs> yeah. really? If you answer that in the chat, you don't win any prizes. Um, <laughs> do Stargate, man. Come on. We could do some Stargate. I could do the Stargate movie, but nobody remembers that. They all talk about you know well, Stargate SG One. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Soren, what mouse did you end up using? Uh, I actually use the wireless harpoon, but I've used the dark core before. Yeah, we have the dark core RGB Pro right now in the gift guide as well, which is pretty cool. What's your thoughts on dark core? It winds up being really, really nice and fluid. Uh, my I'm used to kind of smaller oriented mice or kind of ambidextrous mice, mm -hmm. so the fins on the side being kind of not quite symmetrical, I guess, mm -hmm. kind of pushed me away. But overall, it, it's really, really nice. Yeah, I, I'm, I've used Dark Core at work a lot. Um, I prefer to use a wired mouse, so I use the Night Sword a lot, which is kind of a similar hand shape. Uh, it's just a wired version of it a little bit. Um, but it's a, yeah, it's a really comfortable mouse for my hand, at least. Um, I'm not sure. Kevin, what are you using? Um, I actually use the Glaive uh, Pro. So this one, when it first came out, I just instantly fell in love. I liked the shape and the movable or the removable uh, finger grips and everything. Um, and then when the Pro came out, it just improved it so much, I think, with the, the thumb buttons. That was my biggest qualm, I think, with the first one. Um, and it was just, this one's like my perfect mouse right now. Um, I, I mean, you know, I like wireless mice, but again, like, I, I'm i so close to my computer and USB hub, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for me. I think it's a use case kind of thing. I wouldn't hesitate to use one. Um, uh, Glaive, you know, if there was like a Glaive wireless or something that was in the works, I have no clue. but. I would definitely use that if it comes out. Cool. Hey, there's a guy, uh, just an announcement, a guy named Northern Tide in the chat just won a K100. So hey, Northern Tide, congratulations. You Ooh. won our flagship K100 Ooh. keyboard. Um, use it wisely. It is sturdy enough that you can home row someone right across the face with it if you want to. It's totally fine. Um, I would advise against it. You might go to prison. Um, but it's pretty dope. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about, the other mouse we have on our holiday gift guide is the M65 RGB Elite, which is our best selling and most popular mouse shape. We do mm -hmm. really well with that, and people really love that. Um, that mouse is based on the very first mouse we ever shipped, the original M60. The hand shape was so popular that it's just basically lived for a decade now, and we've just revised it slightly, a little bit better sensors, a little bit better switches, you know, things like that. But the hand shape is almost identical to the 10-year-old mouse that we, we came up with back in the day. Um, just because I like it so much. This one's another kind of glow up, right? From from the older versions, um, the M65 RGB Elite, uh, the thumb buttons again were another point of contention for me. But with the larger, uh, improved and spaced thumb buttons, it's a lot easier to recognize which ones you're pressing. So if you're in a game, let's say I play a lot of Overwatch, I map uh, melee to the thumb buttons, and so knowing on like Zenyatta where one of them is uh, set to like healing orb, and then the other button is set to melee. If I want to melee somebody like in the heat of the moment, I don't want to accidentally heal my teammate. I mean, I do want to heal my teammates. But, yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't really want to heal. heal. It'll be purposeful. <laughs> it's a peaceful healing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's the cool, that's the cool peripheral stuff, the gaming stuff. Let's talk about building stuff. I'm, you know, obviously heavy on the building side. I like to build PCs. I like to play around with PCs and take them apart and wonder why, you know, someone put a screw in the wrong place and stuff. So we have a bunch of cool stuff going on for that. Um, right now we have uh, the 4000D and 4000D airflow cases on the builder's guide as well. Those cases are in inventory. You can buy them from the website. Those cases are like 
they came out in September and everyone's going crazy, especially that 4,000 uh, airflow, which is one of the most popular cases we've ever made. Uh, people seem to love this case. It's high airflow case at a time when graphics cards just got way hotter. Um, so very fortuitous for us to have uh, designed such a case. So the 4000D airflow is great. If you guys haven't seen it yet, it has a nice mesh front. Um, you can put up to nine or to seven fans in the thing. Uh, it can fit a 360 millimeter radiator in it. So you can put an H150 in it. It's a really, really cool case. Um, can, I highly recommend you pick up we, a 4000D airflow. Can we name drop a little bit? I mean, in recent uh, weeks, I think it's been a lot in the public eye on Gamers Nexus. And you know, Stephen Burke is generally very uh, hard on cases, right? So Stephen Stephen Burke mentioned the 4000D airflow uh, in his kind of best cases of 2020 thing, like three or four or five times. So yeah, I, I'll give him that. I mean, you know, it's not kind of it's kind of not fair to to leave Stephen out of the conversation when he criticizes us, and then bring him into the conversation when he praises us. But I'll do it. I have no problem with that. So um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, also, I, the, the content is great. I mean, it's very like straightforward and, and forthright it's, it's yeah it's, yeah it's it's a great case uh and i'm not just saying that because i work here i really did build my own personal pc in a 4000 d airflow in fact this case right here this this cool retro case is based on the original the the 4000d case and i'll talk more about this in a minute but our buddies at origin put this together i'll explain what it is but for those of you guys who want to know uh why i'm having what looks like a, a 20 year old pc here next to me um the uh, spoilers coming soon um, also, congrats to uh, Theophilo Francisco in the chat. Uh, I probably pronounced that wrong, but you won HS60 haptic. It's oh, you're gonna feel the noise. Come on, it's, a, it's the headphones <laughs> that massage your ears while you game. Congrats, yo. <laughs> they, they are haptic feedback. So let's let's answer the question. Haptic feedback. What is haptic feedback, Kevin? Haptic feedback is essentially uh, there's like little for lack of a better term, there's like little vibrations that happen when there's a deep bass hit. So you're, you are feeling the rumble, you're feeling the noise and it gives you more of a sense of being there in the action. Like if you're playing a, you know, first person shooter, like COD or something, Valorant. Um, if you, uh, you know, have a grenade blow up next to you, you'll feel the rumble and uh, it'll give you more of that sensation of actually being there. So we're really trying to focus on that immersive aspect of gaming. Cool. Do you ever use uh, uh, anything with haptic feedback? Soren, something like a headset or uh, like a rumble pack controller, maybe? It would be pretty much my phone or uh, like if it's a game pack controller, those work. I usually play a lot of games, not first person shooters anymore because so many people make a comment. But I do play Warframe with a controller, so ha. But, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried them yet. It's one of my to do. Okay. Yeah, I give it a give it a shot. I was actually very skeptical about it, but when I get to play with it, I was I was surprised how subtle and still useful it is. It, it even helped with like positional stuff. Like, um, you know, you hear an explosion in a game, but if you can kind of feel it on the left side but not on the right side, it kind of lets you know that uh, yeah. it's coming from that direction. Mm -hmm. Seems handy. So that was pretty cool. Um, so anyway, congrats I, to Theo for that. Um, I did use the Rumble Pack for the N64. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, that one. No. I, I, did, I didn't ask you, Kevin. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> I was just throwing it out there. It was free, free info. <laughs> Vanessa, have you used HS60? I have not. I've been strictly with the uh, the virtuosos. Virtuoso. Yeah. If they make an HS60 haptic with the like the pearl colorway, I think that I could probably convince my wife to get one. She really likes that kind of white and rose gold vibe that it's it's got going on. So. Yeah, I've been playing with the idea of changing my profiles to white, but <laughs> I yeah, I got my girlfriend the the white one before, but now the pearl came out. I might have to see if it's he wants that. Ever. Yeah, yeah, that's how we do it. You know, it's like uh, it's like Adidas. We release new colorways every couple of months, and you feel like you got to get the new ones. And then next thing you know, you have like a closet full of sneakers, and <laughs> we'll have seventeen thousand dollars in credit card debt. The easy <laughs> Okay. <laughs> The easy, the easy virtuosos. <laughs> uh, there's a dude named, uh, I can't even pronounce it. It's like W4RKVS Warks. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. Warkus, Marcus, whatever. He just won a 4000D, so congrats to that dude. That dude is going to build a case, uh, a PC in a case that is one of my personal favorites we've ever made. Uh, and that's something because I made cases for eight years here, so I'm a little bit sensitive about it. But they did a really good job on this one, so credit where credit's due. The pictures on the line don't quite show that uh, back area where you put all the mm -hmm. cables. You can find it if you go through the gallery, but just looking at it on the side, it doesn't look like it has any place for the cables, but there's a lot of room in there. 
can we show a little bit? Can we? Yeah, let's uh, bring it up, uh, Alan. I'll show you guys on the the website here. So here's the four thousand D Airflow. Um, this is just the product page. You guys can see the front panel here has the nice mesh in it and everything. But then um, we go through. Let me see if we can find the gallery photo. Actually, I'll just scroll down because I know. Whoa, hold on a sec. I gotta redo my thing here. Sorry, my computer just went crazy. I will fix it really quickly here. Cyberpunk. So yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. We should be back now. There we go. I like the mini game though. Yeah. Fun oh, the game. Nope, it's scrolling is is uh, ruining Christmas. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you can see here the rapid route cable management, what we call it. Um, we have these kind of uh, tie downs, and there's this channel where you can put all the, the cables, and then you Velcro tie them together. Uh, and that's really, really cool. It makes it really easy to get clean cable routing. So highly recommended. If you don't have a case like that that has easy cable routing, um, then the back of your case looks like a, a spaghetti disaster. Um, in fact, even if you do have a case like this and you just don't bother to use it, you have a spaghetti disaster. In which case, segue time. I recommend the 680X, which is even cooler because it has just a giant cavern in the back where you can shove cables and lazily just forget they existed. It's send the cables to the Shadow Realm. Yeah. <laughs> Yugi boy. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the 680X is such a great case. I mean, it, for those who are less than willing to spend, uh, you know, a whole day doing cable routing or something, you know, so... It's it's really easy to make it look nice with minimal effort, which you know that's kind of what engineering is all about. Like do things well with minimal effort and make it efficient. You know, yeah. it's it's <laughs> it's nice. And there's a lot of space too. Uh, in the bottom, you can fit up to two 140 millimeter fans. Um, in the front, 100, uh, 360 millimeter radiator, which is three 120 fans. Um, I was running that one for a little while. Uh, it was a little bit big once I downsized my desk, but um, I actually I really love that case, and I, I really miss it because uh, it was beautiful to look at with all the RGB in it. So yeah, it's one of my favorite cases based on the uh, the old school Air 540, which was really really popular too. So that dual chamber design has proven to be kind of a thing that has been around for like what eight years now or something, seven years since we launched the Air 540, and people just really really like it, and they just want a new version of it all the time. I always get questions: When are you guys going to rever uh, revise? Not reverse. When are you guys going to revise the Air 540? When are you guys going to revise the 680X? So people like the design. Oh yeah, so I mean that actually kind of reminds me, uh, Soren. You, since you did build your PC recently, well, what what case did you use? Were you using a dual I, chamber? I used the four thousand X actually, so I had oh. the glass being in front instead of the mesh. I was kind of back and forth between Airflow or the uh, X, but I like the look of the glass on the front. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. the best Airflow comparatively, but it hasn't like I'm running a thirty ninety and it hasn't had any problems yet. <laughs> Yeah, the 4000X uh, and the 4000D, they have solid fronts. The 4000D is steel and the 4000X is glass. Um, and the other difference in the 4000X is it comes with the lighting node uh, core to controller to control the lighting, and it comes with three RGB fans in the front. So um, even though it costs a few bucks more, um, the fans and the lighting controller themselves were worth more than the difference. So you can save a bit of money. If you're going to go RGB anyway, you can get a 4000X RGB and save a few bucks. Um, Something to note about that, though, the because the nodes come in, Mm -hmm. With the case, they're also pre-installed. Uh, yeah. You can take. I actually had to take them out to put in the other command node that I actually bought. Ah, uh, yeah. From Corsair, um, but if you want to take them out, it's possible they're adhesively stuck on with foam. So we had some fun doing that on stream. Yeah, that that double-sided tape that we put on there is no joke. Um, I, was, I will get this off. And that took about 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you I think you're King Arthur now. I think that's your king yeah, now. Right? You that's get to be king, of course, there. You have pulled yeah. off the double sided tape. Um, <laughs> in the future, if anyone is trying to take off double sided tape, warm it up with like a hair dryer, not like a heat gun, because that'll actually melt some of the plastic. A heat gun is usually too hot. But if you have a hair dryer and you, you uh, put some warm air on the double sided tape, it'll become much, much easier to pull off. It's, it's much, much more adhesive when it's cool. Um, so, speaking of cool, Another segue. I'm bad at these. I'm just going to do my best. So cool. I apologize. Super cool. Uh, <laughs> Super cool. CX Power Supplies. Kevin, you're a Power Supply guy. You need Power Supply uh, product management. Why don't you tell us about CXF? The CXF is our first foray into RGB uh, Power Supplies. Um, and I think a lot of people, uh, it was a little bit polarizing. Um, some people were like, why? And then other people were really welcoming it. Um, but we wanted to have the option for those who did want it. And um, it's even without RGB, it's an excellent power supply. Um, it's 80 plus bronze, so you know you're going to have uh, really good efficiency. 
it's fully modular. Um, and the nice thing about the RGB and that fan is that it, it doesn't necessarily plug in through uh, USB. It actually just plugs in like a fan into an existing lighting controller. Um, but you can also plug it into the ARGB headers on your motherboard. Um, so you can control it through things like um, ASUS or a sync um, or like Mystic Light or something like that. So um, it just uses that standard ARGB uh, format. Um, other than that, um, I, like I said, you know, we, it comes in uh, fully modular design, uh, black and white uh, variants, uh, and with color match cables. Um, it's just a really good power supply overall. Very, very quiet. Um, and, and, and actually, one of the biggest new things, it supports modern standby. So you know how your phone... What's, what's modern standby? Yeah. So modern standby uh, is a new kind of sleep state that uh, Intel and Microsoft have been kind of working on. Um, you know how your phone can be shut off in sleep, and then when you press the power button, it just instantly right back where you left off. In essence, that's where we want to get with uh, desktop PCs. So as soon as you press the power button, it's just right back where you were when you stopped working or gaming or whatever. Uh, just be sure to save a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks. So one of the things I wanted to also say thank you to uh, Gert K, just one of 4000 D, so good to him. Someone in the chat asked about the best memory for Ryzen. Um, I will talk about that in a second because there's a cool way to find out on our website. Um, actually, you know what, Alan? Uh, let me show people real quick. This is something that a lot of people don't know, but I'll bring it up um, on the Corsair website. So if you just go to Corsair.com um, and you want to find you know, the product you're looking for, under PC components, you pick memory, which is here. Um, and then on the memory page, if you want something for Ryzen, all you have to do is pick the motherboard platform that you're looking for. So let's say AMD X570, boom. Now all the sort here will be all your Ryzen uh, memory. So this is great for Ryzen 4000, Ryzen, or Ryzen 5000, Ryzen 3000 series. So that's a really easy way to find Ryzen compatible memory. So um, a lot of people are like, hey, how do I know which one works? All of this stuff is optimized. So if I click on this, say Vengeance uh, RGB Pro 32 gig kit here, um, I can click on it. It'll bring up the page, uh, optimized for AMD Ryzen here. Uh, and you'll see that optimized uh, there. And you can also choose you know, what type of kit you want what frequency and speed you want from the drop down, um, And then it tells you all the, the useful stuff and the cool video work and, and photo work that, that everyone here does. Um, but realistically, um, that's a really good way to sort it. And if you don't want RGB memory, you can get Vengeance LPX. If you want better RGB memory, you can get Dominator Platinum RGB. Um, yeah. And if you, if you don't want any of that memory, then you know I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I can't help yeah. you. <laughs> Speaking of uh, the AMD Ryzen stuff, um, so when you're thinking about RAM for those systems, you kind of want to consider the clock speed, the memory clock speed for those. Um, I, in my testing, I found that 3200 and 3600 megahertz is kind of the sweet spot for performance. Um, I think anything beyond that, um, you're more than welcome to buy you know, 4000 megahertz RAM, um, but I think it's going to be diminishing returns at that point. It changes and, uh, a bit, Kev, on 5000 series. So 5000 oh, series, okay. yeah, 5000 series, you can do uh, 4,000 plus on, on the memory and get some performance out of it. So oh, we started okay. to see, yeah, the way they did performance on, on Ryzen uh, 5,000 series is a little bit different. So we yeah, do so see I guess, from, I mean, I, the last time I tested was 3,000 series. So, you know, yeah. I'm Back a little in the olden days back. of February. Ooh, yeah. The olden RAM. Before, <laughs> before the COVID times. Yeah. <laughs> which, which was, well, that was like yesterday, but also like a year ago. Like it's, yeah, somehow it's both. It works, yeah. March, March what? I forgot the day. <laughs> we're not still in March right now. <laughs> we <were>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I did want to say, let's see what else. There was a couple other things we want to talk about. So we had some other component stuff we have on, on special. So that Dominator Platinum RGB is there. H150i Elite Capellix, which we mentioned, the Elite Capellix coolers. Um, for those of you guys who uh, wanted a, a cooler that has Elite Capellix. One of the cool things about that is it's still our best performing cooler. It comes with the cool RGB fans. But um, it also comes with two different pump caps. So if you want the pump cap that's pictured here, it, that comes installed on there. But there's four little bolts and a little Allen wrench that you can take that, that cap off. And then uh, you can change it out with the secondary pump cap. Or if you want, you can go to the page and download the STL file and 3D print your own pump cap in whatever color you want um, or have it machined at a machine shop because we'll give you the 3D files to do that with. So it's a pretty cool uh, little feature that a lot of people that don't know about Elite Capellix coolers is that that little... Uh, Pump cap is is got a little uh, top that you can change out, and the thirty three LEDs behind it stay there no matter what cap you put on there. So you can print out your own design, put your own logo, um, you know, do a lithograph of your dog's face or whatever, yeah. and then go nuts. 
I love that transparency though that we're that we're releasing the 3D files. What was that, Vanessa? Sorry. I said I I didn't know that. I have that. So <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, so I mean, being able to 3D print stuff, I mean, you know somebody's just going to measure it and model it anyway. So why wouldn't we you know, just give out the, yeah. the pump cap design yeah. and, and remove that middle step and see what people come up with? Do, do we have any, uh, like, have, has anyone ever shared any custom caps they've uh, made? I, I 3D printed one just to see at home if I could, you know? And I, it came out in like, you know, it took me like maybe 20 minutes to do it. It was really easy to do. Um, mm -hmm. But I did it out of this terrible gold filament because it was just a test. And uh, I don't okay. want to show anybody because it's it's terrible filament. It's really bad. It was some, <laughs> it was some cheap Amazon basics like trash <laughs> filament, you know. <laughs> what was that, Soren? I require a picture. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we need to see. Yeah, I, if when we switch to the Epic Cam thing, I'll show you guys that. <laughs> Somebody should print one where it's like the the girl from the ring, like coming out of the TV or something. You know, it, that'd look kind of cool. I think you just told Dustin what his next uh, 3D yeah. file would be. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll show you guys actually real quick. Um, if we show the screen right now, um, you can see here this is the Ali Capellix product page. If you go to downloads, you can download the 2D and 3D drawings right here for the Ali Capellix pump cap. So you can download them right there and print your own or have it machined or, or made. Take that 3D file to any manufacturing kit guy and they can do your own. Um, there's a bunch of services online that'll 3D print something for a fee. So if you send it to them and say, hey, can you 3D print this for me and mail it to me, they'll do that for you. Um, and then you can also, if you want to, you can open it up in any kind of 3D CAD file, um, like Google SketchUp or something, and you can add logos to it and then have it uh, printed out that way too. So pretty cool. Yeah. 360 is uh, free for personal use, by the way. Just want yeah. to throw that so, out there. Yeah, it's a, it's a neat feature that not enough people know about. Um, the other thing about Elite Capellix I like to talk about that nobody really realizes is there is a secret feature of Elite Capellix. Oh, um, really? A secret feature. Besides it's the Easter three. Egg. Well, I have, let's call it an Easter egg. Can we call it an Easter egg? Is uh, that? No, probably not. Why? It's game. I'm okay. Whatever. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> it's, um, I think that the thing that people don't realize is um, previously, if you wanted to control your RGB fans in our coolers, you basically plugged it into a little Y cable, and the cooler pump cap had a little in, had the intelligence built into the pump cap where it would control the two fans or the three fans that came with the cooler. Um, so you can control those three fans or those two fans. This thing has what we call uh, the commander core involved. Uh, so instead of having the logic in the pump cap, it has a little breakout box that is a, a basically a, a cut down version of the Commander Pro XT. It's called the Commander Core, and it will control up to six fans, uh, lighting and speed control, um, so that you can actually do your whole case. You can turn your whole case into a smart case with an Elite Capellix cooler, which is really, really cool because now you've saved the, the extra bucks you would spend on doing, hey, I would like to do you know the RGB stuff that I did in my and fan speed control I did on my cooler with my case fans that are in the front of my case, but I don't want to have to go buy a whole Commander Core or Commander Pro XT. Now you can do that. If you bought an Elite Capellix, you just plug in the fans that came with your case into the, the Commander Core and it's all taken care of. So that was based on user requests. Why don't you guys make it easier for us to upgrade everything? And our answer to you was, yeah, okay, sure. Here you go. So go nuts. Yeah, <laughs> it's just that easy. <laughs> Um, so it looks like PBT or polybutylene terephthalate is asking, will we ever make a proper SFF case? Small form factor. Um, factor. <laughs> factor. I like saying that with a hard O. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the, uh, uh, I think probably, sure. I can't talk about unannounced products, but odds are good. If people like them and people seem to like them, small form factor has been more popular. Of course, their one is massively successful. Um, as a PC, as a small form vector PC. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be surprised to see us launch a small form vector case one day. I can't be any more specific than that. Um, but yeah, I would expect that, you know, we have a mini ITX case now with Air240 that sells really, really well and do, does very well for that. Um, our micro ATX and mini ITX. Uh, the, we've had mini ITX cases in the past, back in the day. Um, and I think that looking at doing small form factor again in the future, because we do sell SFX power supplies. Uh, Kevin mm. knows that. He sells yes. probably the best SFX power supply in the world with SF750. Yes, um, I, I have to agree. I, I, that's not, that's an unbiased opinion also. I mean, even before I was the PSU guy for Corsair, I, I felt like the SF750 was the best SF power supply you could get on the market. And yeah. that remains true today. Uh, and so it would be silly for us not to have a case that relies heavily on SF power supplies, aside from Corsair One. So, I would I would say that that's a safe assumption that at some point Corsair will have a small form vector case. I can't be any more specific than that, but 
I'm yeah. buying for it. Like I really want one. You know? Yeah, a lot of us do here. Every day, I'm pretty sure people are annoyed. Uh, oh me. no, that's that's not why. But yeah, they are. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's many reasons to be annoyed. I think, but probably that's contributing a little bit. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> The dominated platform we already talked about. So, okay, it's Vanessa's time to shine. Woo! Vanessa, we have cool stuff for streamers. Uh, obviously, we've talked about gamers. We've talked about builders. Once you've built your PC and you've got the cool gaming hardware uh, and you decided to share it with the world like Soren does or like you do or like Kevin does because all three of you guys are streamers and I am not. Um, <laughs> why don't we go through the various hardware that we have kind of going on and we wanted to talk about Stream Deck first. Yeah, so we've got a couple of different kinds of Stream Deck. We've got uh, Stream Deck Mini, regular Stream Deck, and Stream Deck XL. We also have Stream Deck Mobile, which is available on Apple and Android phones. Uh, you can get it for free right now for 30 days. And then after that, it's $2.99 per month or $24.99 for the year. So if you want to try out Stream Deck, you're not sure if it's for you, that's a great way to try it out. So uh, this is this is the what she was talking about. So this is the standard yeah. Stream Deck. This is my Epoch Cam uh, kind of app on my phone here. So I'm just doing this. This is why it looks like this. But this is the, the Stream Deck standard. This is the big XL and this is the Stream Deck Mini. So that's the real size comparison. It's, you know, six and then what is that? A 15 and what is it, 30, what? 32. Okay, so why don't you show us, Vanessa, on your uh, your yeah. camera, what it looks like and then in use. So I'm gonna use Epoch Cam here and give me one second to pull it up. There you go. So I don't have a fancy stand. So this is what my Stream Deck looks like. And then I can go over to my different channels and I could do really fun zooms. So for example, doot, doot. and that's literally just me pressing a button that's tied to a scene. Um, you can get as complex or as simple as you want. It can be you press a button and it changes the scene or it could be as a complex with a multi-action where you press one button and it sets up your entire stream such as opening up Twitch or YouTube, opening up, uh, you know, if you're gonna do any music, opening up your game, turning on all your lights, you can literally have it do as much or as little as you'd like it to do. Cool, um, and I, I was impressed with just, you know, one of the how easy Stream Deck is to figure out. Like once you, it seems like a really complicated thing. Like oh my gosh, you have to set up all these macros and everything. But the Stream Deck software is super intuitive. Like you just kind of drag things to the screen and it just goes there. There's no like or series how, of codes or anything. How important is Stream Deck in your daily streaming activities? I use it pretty much like whenever I'm running the Elgato streams, I'm constantly using it for switching scenes. If I need to mute something, I can actually uh, tie it back with my wave mic. If I need to mute a specific channel, such as, hey, we're not playing the game anymore, mute the game. When we go to start stream, I press one button and it will lower the music that we're playing and then up our mics. So it's it's literally as complex or simple as you make it to be. Soren, you stream like all the time. Do you use the stream deck? Uh, I do. I actually use it to primarily control, like she said, things of scenes, but I also have it so I can control my lights. So I have two key lights behind me that green, uh, light the green screen so I can turn them on and off when I sit down. I can have one button for both or just separately for testing. So, so. that's an excellent segue because we are going to talk about key lights uh, here in just a second. Too. So <laughs> that's, it's like you knew what we were going to talk about, Soren. That's <laughs> phenomenal. I actually wish I read more because then I have to match you better up. No, I'm guessing. <laughs> that's all right. We wrote this and we barely remembered it anyway. Um, we wrote something? <laughs> kind of. We all have something. A little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, do you use which Stream Deck do you use? Do you use the standard one or? I use the XL. I, I used to use the standard one, but the uh, thing with the XL is you can actually just unplug it separately from the cable if I can actually do it. I actually have it. So, there's not a wired toggle around. So, you can actually carry this around, pack it away, and then connect it to your PC whenever you get to sit down. It comes with a stand, but that's out of reaching distance for the moment. <laughs> right on. Hey, I wanted to congratulate Vixons uh, for the H100 I get Elite Capelix win. So there's a guy out there who has an Elite Capelix now and uh, will standard uh, have Commander Core so he can make everything RGB even more if he wants to, control fan speeds and everything. So congrats to him. Okay, so what else are we talking about, Vanessa? We talked about Stream Deck and how amazing Stream Deck is. So we've got three kinds of lights. Uh, we've got Key Light Air, if you want to pull them out, yep. We've got key light air, we've got key light, and we've got ring light. Key light is our smaller light, key light is the bigger light, and then ring light is the, the ring. Uh, when you get key light air, if you want to switch over to Epoch Cam so you can show the different stands, key light air comes with its own stand for your desk, as you can see there. Uh, key light 
actually comes with the desk clamp, but we have it on a weighted base right now for multi-mount, but that's what the desk clamp looks like. Yeah, that's a desk and then ring light also comes with that desk clamp. So what the, the desk clamp is really great if you don't have a lot of desk space, because uh, desk space is really important. You, you already have a lot of stuff on your desk. So this will just actually connect right to the side of your desk or in the back of your desk, and you can have your desk pushed all the way up to a wall or anything and not have to worry about you know, how you're going to have these lights on tripods and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and Kevin, Kevin, you were saying something about how this little uh, uh, adjuster, the, the wind-up thing, can be kind of keyed downwards. Yeah, so I, you know, when Vanessa was talking about how you can save space with the key light, um, you know, I didn't know when I first got my key lights that uh, you could actually move the little handle down and swivel it free of the screw, the screw that's tightening it down. So um, before I was like struggling with trying to like tighten it and you know having the table too close to the wall, but then you know just by happenstance I pulled it and I was like, oh wow, okay, this is this is great. So there's that's another little secret, you know, for. Uh, those of you who may have key lights and maybe didn't realize that it's spring loaded, you can pull the handle down and swivel it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, one other little quick note with key light air, you can actually tuck the cord into a groove on the back um, so that you can have better cord management too. Not, not oh. a lot of people might not know that right away. We tweeted it recently too, so you can check out our Twitter. Oh. Um, <laughs> Um, the last thing I want to talk about with key lights real quick is that they are also controllable via your stream deck. So with one button, I could turn off all of my lights and turn them right back on. I can change the colors. So like right now, I prefer blue lighting, but let's say you really like yellow lighting. I can go ahead and change my colors to yellow. I am not, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan of yellow lighting. But maybe you are. Maybe you like to look alive. I don't. I like to have that. <laughs> <laughs> that is the look of me. Thank you. Um, but you can customize it however you want. You can set the the Kelvin to whatever you, you fits your look, essentially. That's pretty sweet. The um, the cool thing about the the lighting thing is it's super easy. Like if you can't see the app, it's just literally you slide over. You know, warm to cool lighting Kelvin uh, lighting temperature, and it's. It could not be easier to make. It's it's so silly how how simple it is and how nobody else does it. And yeah. the software is also free with the, uh, the lighting products. You don't have to pay for the software. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, speaking of of uh, apps, I forgot we talked about Stream Deck, Stream Deck uh, XL, and Stream Deck Mini, uh, but we didn't talk about the Stream Deck app. We did. We talked about did Stream we? Deck Mobile. Yep, oh. I snuck it in there really quick. Oh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I was busy, terrified that I was going to drop my phone, so that might have been. No, no worries. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so what else do we have on the Elgato holiday pack? We have the HD60S uh, and the Camlink 4K. I'm using Camlink 4K right now, actually, to capture the video camera to my laptop. Yeah. Um, well, next we were going to talk about mics. Did you want to talk about capture cards? Um, I just want to let people know that those are on the holiday gift guide in their inventory because people have been asking for those all year. People have been, uh, obviously, with work from home all year long, people have been wanting to do uh, video capture stuff. So um, I think people should know that uh, we do have those now. So you guys yeah. can get that. Camlink especially, a lot of people have been asking for Camlink. Yep. Um, but speaking of microphones, let's talk about, let's talk about mics. This is a Wave 3, uh, but why don't we talk about the two Waves? Yeah, so I'm also using a Wave 3. Uh, pretty much the, the only difference between Wave 1 and Wave 3, there's, there's a couple of differences, but uh, I'll break down which one might be the right one for you. So one of the big things is how you mute your mic. So for example, Wave 3 has what's called a capacitive mute. So I'm going to continue talking, but I'm also going to literally just a touch of a button. Uh, with the Wave 1, you do that by pressing the knob in on the microphone. So you can still mute, don't worry. Uh, the other thing is the Wave 1 uh, has uh, up to 48 kilohertz, whereas the Wave 3 has 96 kilohertz. That's not going to make a big difference for you if you're streaming. The, ba the big difference there is if you're doing YouTube recordings, then you'll probably want that higher kilohertz. But Wave 1 works just great for you if you're looking to stream. Uh, the last thing is on the Wave 3, there are three different ways to uh, use your mic, like monitoring wise. You can adjust your gain. You can uh, monitor via headset by plugging into the aux in the back. And then you can also monitor your uh, your game chat, essentially. Uh, with Wave 1, you can only monitor your uh, mic gain as well as your headphone monitoring. So just keep that in mind. Both mics, though, come with Wavelink software for free. 
And Wavelink software, in my opinion, is the chef's kiss. It's, it's, you, you get a free mixer with your microphone, essentially. Uh, you can, like I was saying how I press one button to run my stream. It will, you, you can monitor your headset and your microphone. Let's say I'm listening to music and I don't want stream to hear it. I turn my headphone up, but I turn stream down. Even though I can hear it, they don't hear it. And it's all through software. You don't have to worry about desk space. My mixers are pretty big. You can all do it through the software. Yeah, I, I can't stress enough how great Wavelink is. Cool. Um, and speaking of Wave, uh, Chris Martin from the chat won uh, Wave One Mic. I'm is he okay. the guy from Coldplay. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk real quick. I think, uh, I think Chris Martin is the lead singer of Coldplay. Am I wrong? Okay. Someone Google that. Uh, I'd rather not. I mean, I mean, to be fair, it's Chris Martin. There's probably like 500 Chris Martins within a mile here, so it's not like a wildly unpopular name or something. It's not like George Macris. Or you? So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Hmm. What was that? Wait, on sale. Ooh. For US. Fancy. It is on the holiday gift guide, by the way. So if you want to wave one mic or any of the other stuff that uh, that Vanessa was just talking about, check out the, the web page, Corsair.com. Uh, scroll down a little bit, and then the panel on the side that says holiday guide, you can buy the stuff right there, and it'll be shipped to you, hopefully, in time for Christmas. Um, Looks like we have another question about Stream Deck. Can we kind of bounce back to that real quick? Um, Ralph Vandermeer asks, any reasons why a non-streamer would buy a Stream Deck? Yes. Uh, as, as the only non-streamer on the chat, uh, I like uh, using mine for work stuff, actually. So um, in the morning when I sit down at my desk to do work from home stuff, I bring up like, you know, Outlook and, and Excel and, and all these different things that I use all day long and the different browser windows. I log into my VPN, all that stuff. I have a, a Stream Deck Mini that has a, a macro button. I press it and all those apps open and they are set to log in automatically instead of me having to go through a process of opening them all separately. Um, and then at the end of the day, I, I press that button again and it closes all those apps directly so that like if my kid comes in to play Minecraft on my PC or something like that, they're not like sending emails to my boss like, <laughs> you know, with just like 500 images of a poop emoji, which... <laughs> You know, that's how they talk to their grandmother on, on Twitter. So. I've actually seen it be used as well as work. Work is definitely one of them. Um, teachers have been using these uh, for their classes and muting and unmuting and like they do like a little raised hand thing. Uh, I've seen uh, photographers and videographers who have used Adobe, such as Photoshop and Premiere to either edit their photos in one button like I. I to one of the photographers that we work with, he presses one button and it edits an entire photo to what he does like his LUTs to. Um, same thing with video editors, they'll be able to cut and you know do all this exporting all with Stream Deck. So there's a lot of things that you can do with it essentially. Cool. Um, there was another couple of questions I wanted to talk to more component side. A guy uh, asked a question or somebody asked a question. Um, the 220T and H100i cooler uh, don't fit together or something because the high profile memory bumps into the, the radiator if you put it up top. Uh, the 220T case, just for everyone's awareness, is a compact ATX case. So it's basically designed to be almost the size of a micro ATX case, but can fit a full ATX motherboard. Um, in order to do that, you have to make some compromises on fitment, right? So it was designed to be a, a much more compact footprint. It's 30% less footprint than a standard mid tower case, like a 275R or a 4000 series case. So one of the sacrifices, one of the trade-offs you have to do is if you're going to put a, a radiator on top on that case, like a 240 up top, you have to use shorter memory, like Vengeance LPX or something like that. Um, on the other hand, if you want to use Vengeance RGB Pro, uh, you can also put the, the radiator in the front of the case on a 220T, um, and you would still have more than enough cooling. You wouldn't have to worry about you know longevity or anything because the tank, the end tank of the, the uh, radiator will still be above the pump cap, so you won't have to worry about that. So that's one of the reasons that 220T has that trade-off. It's much, much smaller. If you don't want to deal with that trade-off and you still want to do a 240 in tall memory, you can do like a 4000D or 4000D Airflow, which is about 30% bigger front to back and a little wider than a 220T. Um, and there's other cases even bigger, 500D, 570X. Those cases are much larger. So if you want more room, um, you can do that. If you want something that's just like, hey, I don't ever have to worry about room again, get a 1000D um, and then move into it. You can live there, uh, and blanket down, some pillows. I, yeah, I, I use one as a side table right now because yeah. it's so large. <laughs> nope. The 1000D is kind of like, once you see it in person, you're just like, it's. I knew it was big, but I had no idea. It, you feel like in 2001, a space odyssey, like the monolith. Like, like 
half my height. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> terrifying. It's terrifying. <laughs> I saw that in George's office once. I was like, oh, I'm moving in here. This is my yeah. new house. <laughs> that is my office. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's go through last thing on the gift guide. I wanted to talk about um, our buddies at Origin PC. They are. I had this here as kind of our sneak a, a teaser here the whole time, but I wanted to go over. They have some cool specials going on. Um, if you go to the, the browser window, uh, we'll show you guys. So the, we have the Chronos systems, which are awesome. Um, they have a bunch of deals there. You can click and configure there. Their desktops and laptops available. You guys can configure this stuff. Origin makes uh, not kind of standard. If you're looking for just kind of a cheap run of the mill laptop or a cheap run of the mill desktop to get you through the day, don't bother. Origin doesn't make cheap run of the mill stuff. They make performance high end stuff. So if you're going to buy a really nice high performance gaming PC and you wanted to customize, you know, which graphics card goes in there, how much storage, what kind of storage, and, you know, even what color paint you want on the side of it. Origin can take care of that for you. They can do full custom liquid cooled if you don't want to do that yourself, um, or you can do you know just air cooled or, or you know all in one cooler like we would do. And um, they build it right. They don't. They don't. They don't slack off. Right. They, they, yeah. They're. They do it right. I mean, they might slack off. I don't know, but they build their PCs right before they <laughs> yeah. slack off. So yeah. Exactly. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say that they don't slack off. I don't know them that well, but uh, no, they, <laughs> they do. They do build incredibly good PCs. One of my favorite things, and I'll bring this up again, is. Um, if you go to their website for special offers, you can see that they have that stuff all going on uh, right now. But one of my favorite other things that they did is this, which is the Go Retro in the Resto Mod PC. Yeah. So, despite the fact that this looks like uh, the PC that I built when I was 17, uh, and I am really old, so that was a long time ago, um, this case does not actually have you know an opti uh, an optical drive in it. it doesn't have a, a five and a quarter inch drive bay it doesn't have a, a floppy disk it doesn't have a turbo button these are all just silk screened onto the top of a 4000d so inside this case is a 4000d it is nothing special uh that is done to make a retro pc it just looks like one um but inside it is the ultimate sleeper you can go to their website configure it put whatever you want in there and have it built so 3080, 3090, you can do whatever you want in this case, and they will put it together and ship it to you. Um, I highly recommend you check that out. It can is. You give us a, can you give us a sneak peek of the inside of uh, this one? Well, this one has nothing in it, so it's oh, it's empty. Wow. It's empty inside, it's just like me. Ultimate sleeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the ultimate sleeper. Yeah, it doesn't. It's it's still asleep, and it will never wake up. Um, no, the, you know, we wanted them to ship us a full built PC, but they were like, you know, hey, we can sell these. Why am I going to give you one for free? And that's a legitimate question. Why would they send us one for free when they can sell them? They sell them faster than they can build them. So, I believe this is a limited edition. I don't think they're going to make this forever. So, if you guys want a cool restaurant PC go to originpc.com and have one built. If you don't want to rest them on PC, go to OriginPC and have another one built. So, Aaron, uh, if, if you had seen this one before you did your build, would you have gone with the retro look? It's not my aesthetic. I actually like <laughs> sci-fi look, all the RGB in the front. So this hey, one man, probably, it looks really what, cool. What's more science me. fiction than a 1.44 megabyte floppy disk? <laughs> right. <laughs> all this you will ever need. But yeah. <laughs> I guess I think it's <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay. So Origin PC says only fifty will be made. So this is oh. one of those fifty. So forty nine, I guess. Unless I got to ship this back to them. Now, how's your answer, Soren? Since you know there's only fifty. <laughs> now I want it slightly more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've already built right. mine. Nine hours it took. I don't, I don't know if I want to get it. Start over. Well, <laughs> one other thing I wanted to talk about, so that's Origin PC. Go to Origin PC, get a PC. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about is we talked about all the holiday gift guide, all the cool stuff. You wanted to buy a specific part, but some people always ask me, like, "Hey, I'm thinking about you know buying uh, a bunch of stuff. Do you guys have a volume discount or something?" We do have some bundles on the website too. So if you guys go to the website and click at the top, the gear for the holidays. Um, there are bundles here. So if you guys are going to buy a keyboard, mouse, and headset anyway, or if you want to buy them for a gift for somebody, you can save a few bucks by buying them together. So there's a couple of HID bundles or uh, uh, gaming bundles where keyboards, mice, and headsets are involved. There's also some builder bundles, so fans with uh, uh, a cooler case, fans, uh, cooler power supply bundles. Uh, Real quick, maybe, just, just, you know, 100 bucks or whatever. Just in case people aren't familiar with the term HID, that stands for human interface device, which is basically anything that you're touching to give input to the computer, like mouse, keyboard, um, things like that. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm used to the meetings we have around here where we just say the word HID like it makes sense to anybody else anywhere. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Um, so that's the bundle stuff. Highly uh, check those out. You can get up to 40% off. I, I know that that sounds weirdly QVC and stuff, but if you're going to buy a new PC anyway and you needed a power supply, a cooler, and a case, you might as well All save the next 24 hours. And we'll... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Get a free ah. coat hanger. 
and uh, and Elgato Stein. <laughs> not, not, not really. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do lightning round questions from the chat. Anybody have questions in the chat? I will answer them or send them to other people to answer them. Can we see the Corsair chair? Vanessa, do you want to show them the, the back of your chair? There you go, yeah. Both rocking the T3, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yes. I like some cloth. Wow. Uh, can we talk about the IQ Beta V2? I can't. There is an IQ Beta. Go to the forums, uh, Corsair forums, to check to log in and, and sign up for the IQ Beta. We do have a beta going on for the next generation version of IQ, but we can't talk about any specifics of it yet. So I don't have, yeah, Billy Mays is not going to be here. Um, he doesn't have an inside voice. I, the main reason we can't talk about the next generation of IQ, let's be honest, is that your guys' minds can't handle it. I mean, it's just going <laughs> to blow your minds. <laughs> <laughs> You're not ready for it. It's well, the, yeah. Yes, your brain Karn, will explode. This is your brain on IQ next gen. Like it's. <laughs> <laughs> will we even, ever make wireless peripherals in white? I, you know what? I don't know. I'll ask the gaming team. I'll say, hey, guys, they want wireless white peripherals. We do white peripherals that are wired. Is it really that hard to just put the white plastic parts on the wireless ones? Uh, yes, maybe they can. So maybe there's something with the white paint that infringes on the RF or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's interfering. It's lead. It's lead white paint. So oh. no, that's a joke. It's not lead paint. Oh my god! I can already hear the email. I'm sure I'm going to get an email from legal like 10 seconds from now. They probably already crafted it. Like, Dear George, please add a YouTube disclaimer that no lead is used in the paints on our yeah. products. If you watch this video, you have to abide by Prop 65. <laughs> we are in California. Um, does George and Soren have an ugly sweater? No, man. Uh, if I wore an ugly sweater, then it would be all ugly. I need to wear an attractive shirt to counteract it. The rest of the team. Uh, can I can I show them the, the poncho I was going to wear? Can I show them? Yeah, that? I mean, I can't stop you. Okay, it's a it's a Christmas poncho. Oh, where is it? I, I can't find it. Off Christmas sweater, so I got dog meat. <laughs> I sent Rise, down Rise in fifty. Oh. <laughs> Ryzen 5950, 4x32 gig. What would be the max RAM? So you're talking 128 gigs in four slots. I would say if you can find a way to get that done, the max RAM speed you should be able to get is at this point maybe 32 to 3600. But good luck, man. That's always expensive. Wow, that this is, is a, really ugly, Kevin. Ugly. Uh, I made this probably like seven years ago. I just I went I like to it. some store and found this nasty poncho thing and put jingle bells on it. <laughs> And you oh, kept people it, love though. you in the office when you walk around with that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like we there, <laughs> someone asked, "Will there be?" Someone asked, "Will there be a keyboard with Stream Deck built in?" Uh, surprise! Uh, there, there kind of is one. Uh, K95 Platinum XT, which Vanessa is using right now, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Right now, I have my keys bound to change my lighting. So right now, I've got it on like the pink uh, teal because that's that's my aesthetic. But then when I play like. Uh, scary games. I'll switch everything to all red. Um, yeah, I have mine set to my profiles essentially. So it doesn't have the 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 S keys on the K95 Platinum XT are not LED, so they don't change like the Stream Deck keys do. But they are functionally the same. You can just as long as you know S1 is this, S2 is that, S3 is that. Mm -hmm. um, they are functionally fun they work exactly like Stream Deck does. Um, yep. The only difference is they don't display the little logos and stuff. Um, at some point, we might add that to a keyboard and stuff, but I think it'd have to be a, a very specific use case. But I, again, nothing's impossible. We've done weirder stuff than that, so I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, someone in the chat asked if they can get a tour of Corsair. Uh, well, not for a little while, at least. I think until uh, we're kind of done with this uh, uh, lockdown thing. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, if you're in the Bay Area, we do have frequent uh, visits of the game room and stuff. Usually uh, we have game room events that are open to the public and, and uh, all that stuff. And if you aren't in the Bay Area and you can get here, feel free to come out and hang out when, when this thing's all said and done. So there's that. Bring in the teams that we sponsor and you know have meet and greets and things like that. And there'll be like food. You can play on the gaming station and stuff or, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, Stranger 14 d are you going to sell the Commander Core by itself? I can't talk about unannounced products, so the chances maybe. Um, at the very least, it'll probably be avail available on the website as like an accessory product for people whose Commander Core died or they broke it by trying to modify it and they want to buy another one. But uh, I don't know if it's going to be sold as like a retail product that you can go to Amazon and buy. So um, we can't talk about that yet. Where is Corsair Nexus available? I can't find it anywhere. It should be on the Corsair website when it's in inventory, but it sells out fairly quickly. So if it's not on the website, uh, keep checking back, and it'll be on there sooner or later. Um, various other resellers carry it sometimes. I know that it was on Amazon and some other places. Oh, I like this one. Um, can we get an official Corsair ugly Christmas sweater by Q? Yeah. I, or, yeah. It's, I mean, how, yeah. Would we, how would we do that? It's, uh, it's hard to make this look 
ugly, right? I mean, you know, it's... well, hey, Kevin, uh, you know, I happen to know that despite being a, a, an accomplished engineer, you're also an accomplished graphic designer. Um, how would you like to design the 2021 Corsair Ugly Christmas sweater? Do it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, like cool. your, you could have it in your portfolio, designed <laughs> ugly Christmas sweater. It'll just be a whole portfolio of ugly Christmas sweaters. <laughs> yeah, but only one of them was asked to be ugly. They asked them yeah, who was your The other one was just me trying to, my best. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Any other cool questions? Uh, was the M60 was before the M65? Yes, that's correct. Uh, M60 was before M65. Um, what software is used for bringing those comments on screen? Uh, Andreas can answer that question for us. What software are we using to show the comments and the questions on the, the screen right now? StreamYard. StreamYard? Okay. StreamYard and OBS, yeah. All right. Uh, when will the Platinum program in white have CL16 only black at the moment. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I'll find out. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's all about supply chain and you know the, the current situation in the world. But uh, we're uh, we and our suppliers we're, we're working as quickly as possible to get these products back online and you know out to you guys because we we want this stuff to be in stock. <laughs> just yeah, as much we as want it as much as you do, guys. Yeah. Um, well, of course, they're launching XL RGB mouse pad. Yeah, probably one day. I can't tell you when or what, but. Odds are good. People seem to want one, so chances are we'll probably make one. Um, I can't be more specific than that, but um, I would not bet against that. Everyone, mouse pads have been getting bigger and bigger. People like RGB mouse pads. Yeah. Combining those two things is a pretty, you know, easy thing to decide that we would obviously do. We can't be more specific than that, but I'm sure that at some point you'll see that. Hey, um, you know, we, I don't know if we talked about what actually the EPOC cam is and how useful oh, yeah. it is. Um, Vanessa, can you kind of go over that? Yeah, so uh, Epoch Cam, we just released it about a month ago. Um, it is only available for iOS right now. We are working on Android. Unfortunately, I can't give a timeline as to when that will be, but we are working on it. We do hear you and we wanna bring that to you. We just wanna make sure we do it right. Um, but what it is, is you can use your phone as a webcam. So that's actually how I was able to show you what I was doing with my stream deck. Yeah. That's also how George was able to show you those close-ups of uh, key light and so on. You can use it wired or wireless, uh, and it has almost no latency. Like it's it's pretty like it, it's spot on. It's great. So let me show you this is the iPhone camera quality. Yeah. Oh, nice. So let me show you guys kind of how this works. I have Epoch Cam on my uh, little cell phone here. This is our game room here, and this is the setup we use for the stream today. So there's a, a thing here that I can see the live chat. There's Andreas, our video guy, Alan, who's the product manager guy at a product uh, event here. Uh, Scott, head camera guy. These are all the game systems we normally use when we do uh, a big gaming event. There's the bar, because every room in the building has to have a bar. The big wall that needs a new logo, obviously, because our logo changed a little bit ago. Um, and then all of these characters on the walls, uh, Duke Nukem, and, and you know, there's about uh, three dozen different characters, including the F4U Corsair fighting plane and Tracer over there. Um, and all these other things, including some water-cooled PCs and our, our uh, Corsair One uh, gaming situation couch over here. All this stuff is in here, and we can show that through EpiCam, which is really difficult to do otherwise. So uh, EpiCam is super flexible because even like that, just with Stream Deck, you can just press a button and go from you know the awesome digital SLR camera to my cell phone camera input um, instantly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just all hooks up wirelessly. I have it plugged into a, a wire here for uh, battery life purposes because my phone will drain if I don't. But um, you can do that over Wi-Fi and it'll go any uh, PC on your network. You install the driver and it's painless. I was surprised how fast and easy. It took me like literally two minutes to do in a meeting the other day. So. Hey, so Soren, um, you you just rebuilt or, or built a PC with a 3090 and the the high end Intel CPU. Um, before that, were you streaming with one or two PC uh, PCs, and you were streaming with two? Yeah. Nice. So, so what about now? Yeah. Uh, both of them were Origin PC computers. Um, one was the smaller Chronos before the, the current gen, and then the uh, desktop was a Millennium. But I would capture from the smaller rig, and that would be my game rig. Awesome. So, so did you have like everything like set up on the the smaller one, like for streaming? Like, what, what can you give us a kind of a layout of your uh, setup there? Um, so, my system is a little bit odd because I actually pipe and funnel everything into Unity as my production software. I composite everything together instead of doing it in OBS, where you normally like I want to have my camera here, I want to have my game, and you drag those around. I do that in Unity, have all the VFX and what I want to do in it, and then send that OBS. That would be on my 
my stream rig. So it has a 20 or it had a 2080 in it, so it could do the encoding, and that's separate from the GPU that actually does all the processing for, uh, say, my VFX, be like cubes flying in the sky, or my background be seamless, whatnot. That would capture from the game rig, which was much smaller, but it could do all of it on one computer. Oh, cool. So, I mean, you're talking about the VFX and using Unity, and you mentioned you're a developer. Um, or do you do game development, or do you just do like visual development? Uh, can you? I have some... computer science, but I, I've never really made a full game. It's something I want to do sometime, mm -hmm. but it, it, I've never really had much time to do it. Um, but I, I've kind of focused all my attention on doing product specs and uh, various notifiers for other people. So if you like have instead of just going to say a browser source and have it so it just pops up say hey this person subscribed you know have it so actually does some animation or some mini game on the screen that people can interact with oh wow that's amazing <laughs> cool uh we had a couple other questions from the chat real quick one let's go around the ryan they said uh, uh favorite old legacy corsair product uh, for uh, Any, anybody, I know some of you guys haven't been here very long. I mean, uh, I was going to be cheeky uh, and say the simple audio, but, you know, I like PSUs a lot. So you want an older PSU? Yeah, because I hate efficiency. Retro power supplies. <laughs> I want one with vacuum. He's and... literally the product marketing guy, the product manager for power supplies, whose job it is to come up with newer and better power supplies. And he's just telling you like the old ones. But I'm, I'm, it, was, it, it was fix it then, Kevin. You're the only guy whose job it is to fix it. <laughs> I know, yeah, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. The, the new power supplies are <laughs> CXF is one of the best power supplies we launched at that price point, regardless of the RGB. Like even if you don't like the RGB, you turn the light off, and it's still the best power supply in its price point. So I highly yeah. recommend that. Um, Soren, you, I know you've uh, not been uh, a legacy computer nerd as, as long as I have, because I've been doing this probably anciently. But uh, do you have uh, any, any old school products that you liked? Uh, from Corsair, there is the old, old K95, the one that had like the 18 switches on it. Oh, uh, yeah. room. That, this studio that I'm in flooded at one point. There was a pipe break above me. Water was everywhere. It had, well, the keyboard was in standing water. Dried it off. Plugged it back in, works. Nice. <laughs> so it's like, okay, sure. <laughs> what about you, Vanessa? Elgato or Corsair product, old school stuff? When it comes to Corsair, as long as it has blue keys, I don't care. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Cherry you know, McBlue switches. Lock, then why have it? Yeah. Um, I, used to, I used to love the blue switches too, but I, I was told I was not allowed to use them anymore. I... <laughs> I only I'm 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 only blue keys. I, I can't I can't go back. If 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 I can't hear myself typing, I'm like, am I working? <laughs> I just feel uh, every time I hear somebody typing on blue keys, I just feel like I'm in like that movie Pan's Labyrinth and there's like the weird little like like I'm pretty sure I'm with blue keys in that <laughs> office. Like I'm, I'm in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I like I like the blue keys because they make me feel way more productive because they 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 make that sound twice. There's a down actuation and an up actuation, so you get that double click. So when you're typing at you know 80 words a minute, it makes you feel like you're typing at 160 words a minute. So you're like, I am incredibly productive right now. It's like a 1940s newsroom in some old movie. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> someone mentioned our HD uh, game capture. So I've, we I see we have some OGs in chat there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at some of the some of the guys in the chat have been around a while. SP twenty five hundred speakers, still the speakers I'm using on my home PC right now. The SP twenty five hundred is nice. They um, <laughs> yeah, they keep asking for more speakers, but mine mine still work and they're eleven years old. So Can I we'll see. <laughs> no, I'm using them. Um, sorry. Uh, six QL fans, do you need the Commander Pro and the Lighting Node Pro, or can you just use the Lighting Node Pro? Um, it depends. If you want to just do the lighting, you can use the Lighting Node Pro. If you want to control the fan speed, you need a Commander Pro or a Commander Core. Because the, the difference between a lighting node and a commander unit is the commander will do fan speed and lighting, whereas the lighting node only does lighting. Uh, so there's that. Um, I think we are about done, guys, for the chat today. Uh, we did a, a pretty good stream. We talked about a lot of products. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Soren. Soren, do you want to do a plug? You want to plug your Twitch channel? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Soren. We stream Tuesday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Schedule is kind of off a little bit because of a recent return home. Uh, we are a family-friendly broadcast, so if you like to just chill, we'll be there. Will we be is... seeing Cyberpunk at all? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Family-friendly and Cyberpunk. Yeah. Yeah. I want to mention real quick, uh, if you guys like giveaways, we are doing a daily giveaway on Elgato Twitter, so make sure to check oh, that out. Yeah. Oh, Elgato Twitter. Kevin, do you have any plugs? 
Uh, no, just uh, we appreciate your patronage and, you know, hope you guys have a nice holiday season. Yep. Um, and I'm Corsair George on Twitter. So if you want to see me randomly accidentally like weird stuff uh, and, and make snide comments to people in the industry, uh, feel free to follow me there. Um, otherwise, we are going to come back in January. We have another one of these next month. We had one last month. We're going to try and do this every month. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit, hopefully, about small form factor stuff and maybe some new products. We'll decide uh, at least you guys uh, some heads up on that. Uh, tune back after the, the new year to our social channels and everything to see when the next one is. Uh, and like always, every one of these streams will be giving away free stuff. We'll be talking about stuff and answering your questions. So if you want a chance to tell us, hey, you know, I asked two months ago for a small form factor case. I asked one month ago for a small form, for, for small form factor case. Uh, and I'm going to ask again until you make it. Um, 24. You got to come back every month until it's done. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'll say, all right, you know, whoever the guy in the chat is, you want a small form factor case. Now's your chance. Thank you very much for bothering us for a month. But Squeaky Wheel gets the grease. So, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, see Thank you guys you, everyone. Time. Thank you, Soren. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>